Hey guys, today we're gonna to be going over, actually, wait a second. I think this shot could look a little bit sharper. Just, just one sec. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but let's see if we can do a better job. So today is all about sharpening. It's one of those things, the first time I used it, I remembered someone gave me a shot and it was totally out of focus. So I'm like, let's see if I can salvage this. Looked up a five minute tutorial on YouTube and thought, wow, I now know all there is to know about sharpening. But, uh, oh man, this rabbit hole goes deep. So you have two options. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. But before we get into that, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more color grading content like this. Anyway, let's jump into it. Now, most cameras that you use at a consumer level actually have sharpening right in the camera. So the image comes out sharper than what the sensor is actually capturing. But when you get into cinema cameras and, and a little more higher end, they don't do that. So it gives you flexibility and control over exactly what you're gonna do with your image. And uh, there's a couple ways you can go about that. Today, our footage is from a Blackmagic Pocket 4K shot in Blackmagic RAW, which is not sharpened in camera. To get us to Rec. 709, I'm literally just going into Aces. Now we have this shot of her knitting here and we just wanna sharpen things up a little bit. So when applying sharpening, one important thing to know is you always wanna stick it at the end of your nodes because you don't want to apply sharpening to pixels that are then going to get manipulated in some way. So it just, it gets yucky pretty quick. So you wanna make sure to apply it at the end. So what you do to get the job done quickly is you literally just go into your blur, make sure you're in sharpening. So I'm in, I'm in sharpening and then we literally just take it down. Usually people like to go to around 47, but to make things a little more dramatic, just to see some effects, we're gonna take it to let's say 40. Here's where I explain why this may not be the best idea. Now, when you're working in a standard Rec. 709 color space, you're dealing with red, green, and blue channels. So you have three channels. And just to make it more clear, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'm just gonna hit Alt-Y, and that's gonna enter up a splitter combiner. And what it's doing is it's taking our channels and it's just separating them out and then bringing them back together. So this in the top is our red, our green, and our blue. And I'll show you that. So we're just gonna increase the offset of the first one, makes it red, great. Second one, green. Third one, extra points if you get it. It's blue. Okay, so when you're sharpening, one thing you don't really wanna do is you, you don't wanna sharpen everything. You mainly wanna sharpen the edges. And a good way to do that is within the luminance channel or shown in RGB is the Y channel, but we don't have any real control over that in our splitter here. So we're gonna have to go into a different color space. So now I'm gonna add a color space transform and we're going to output that to LAV. Now this looks like garbage. <laughs> to make things look a bit better, I'm just gonna add a color space transform in the end, change the input color space to LAV, boom. Now we're back to normal, but Things in our mixer here are different. So what was once red, green, blue is now a little bit different. So when I increase the offset of this top channel, it gets brighter and when I decrease it, it gets darker. So now that is our luminance. And then this channel is our magenta and our green. And then this channel is our yellow and our blue. And now we can actually do something with the luminance channel. So we can apply sharpening in that method. So if we go through and we apply our sharpening here, that's gonna get us more the effect that we're looking for and it's gonna sharpen the edges. One other method you can employ, I'm gonna delete all of this, start again. We're then gonna go in and we're gonna change the color space of this one specific node. So we're gonna go through, color space, we're gonna get in the LAB color space. We're then going to take our channels. So if we remember, the L is the luminance, the A is your magenta and your green, and your uh, B is your blue and your yellow. So we're gonna get rid of channel two, we're gonna get rid of channel three, and now we can just impact our luminance channel. And that's kind of a quick way of doing it. 
But let's say you don't want to do that to every single clip. So I can show you a way to add sharpening to all your clips that you want to add it to super fast. And we're going to do that by using groups. So let's go through and we're going to take these first four clips here. I'm going to shift click. And then we're going to add into new group. So we're now going to go through. Let's just copy this grade. Now you see you have more dots up here. So we have a group pre-clip. This wouldn't be a good space to add your sharpening. However, we also have a group post clip. And what that means is literally all of these clips now can be impacted by the group post clip. So let's say I go in here, I'm gonna copy over that sharpening, go back to the clip level, get rid of the sharpening on this. Now we go back to our group post clip and it's now been applied to the other clips. Now it's a little extreme, 42. Let's take it down to like 47. And you can see it's now been applied to all the other clips. Anyway, I hope that helped you and explain sharpening a little bit. I know it's kind of a wormhole and there's a ton more information that I'm gonna link down in the description. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed for lots more. And if you wanna see more in depth, color grading and, and really some more advanced content like this, let me know. I'm actually going through some training right now and getting officially certified from Blackmagic. I'm trying to use this downtime during the whole pandemic to learn as much as I can and become a better filmmaker and, and colorist. And I also really wanna provide accurate information on this channel. There's lots of sources on YouTube where maybe it's a little less than rock solid. So I'm trying to do everything I can to get the, the best knowledge and uh, the best things that I can pass along uh, to you folks, so if there's anything you want to learn anything more about, just let me know down in the comments. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.